for today american transcendentalism british victorian and american realist period okay now american renaissance or transcendentalism so basically you might remember from uh, one of the earlier classes that uh, we did british renaissance period okay and i told you at that time that uh, the word renaissance stands for rebirth of knowledge and the british renaissance period is marked by the rebirth of classical uh, texts but this is not british renaissance we are talking about american renaissance today it is also called american transcendentalism roughly it spans over 1828 to 1865 so the time is before the civil war american perspective on the world through these texts moby dick 1851 and leaves of grass 1855 these are these two are two major texts of american renaissance literature moby dick is a novel of huge scale and as the title might imply so it it is about you know uh, a a huge fish right is about ocean right and melville is uh, you know one of the major novelists in american history walt whitman on the other hand is a poet right and he wrote this epic poem called leaves of grass 1855 so this period is recognized to be the period of american renaissance because the most important literature classical literature in united states was written in this time these two are just two major texts right so no history of american literature is complete without mentioning melville and walt whitman the names are written in front of you so along with that we had a movement in the us called transcendental movement transcendental movement claimed that uh, human beings will be happier if they have direct engagement with the nature and by nature they meant just the opposite of urbanization so in order to get uh you know a higher imagination a spiritual relief according to transcendental movement people should connect back to the pure nature as one might find you know in landscape or in say you know in in mountains right or in jungles away from the city sorry so kind of replacement uh nature serves as a replacement of church so the argument that the transcendental writers had was that uh, human beings can get a spiritual and religious satisfaction from the nature so they spend time with trees with landscape with lake with you know waterfalls 
and all you know all those uh, uh, physical representations of nature. So these writers were very serious about the role of nature in the life of a society. The most important writers of this movement, which is called Transcendental Movement, were Rolf Emerson and Henry David Thoreau. So both of them wrote uh, fiction and non-fiction in order to establish the idea that uh, people should return to nature in order to get spiritual and religious satisfaction. So right after Transcendental Movement, there emerged in the US a Gothic canon. The Gothic canon was in a sense related with Transcendental Movement as well. So basically, Gothic means mysterious. Under Gothic canon, that kind of literature was written, which was full of mystery and which was also you know, full of the dark elements of human nature, like fear. So these writers, Edgar Allan Poe and Nathaniel Hawthorne, Edgar Allan Poe was famous for his short stories, while Nathaniel Hawthorne was famous for his novels. Both of them exposed or represented the dark nature of human beings. So how, for example, or why people get, get scared, the mysterious element in human nature, all that was represented in their works. Along with that, there emerged the canon of African American literature. Like transcendentalism, African American literature is one of the major chunks of all American literature. At this time, we are not talking about the modern African American literature. We are just referring to the beginning of African American literature from 19th century. So it was Frederick Douglass who wrote his famous autobiography, which was published in 1845. So Frederick Douglass is one of the uh, initial major writers in African American tradition. So students who are interested in studying American literature, they very often end up reading African American literature because it is so huge. And starting from the beginning of 19th century, it, it continues to have, you know, major presence in overall American literature. Now, parallel to that, we come to the Britain. What was happening there in 19th century? So in 19th century, uh, we had the rise of the period, what we call the Victorian period. So the Victorian period comes after the Renaissance period in England. So you should remember that, you know, uh, in the last class we discussed American colonial literature, but before that we discussed the new classical or Renaissance period in England. So this slide, the Victorian period is basically continuation from there. Okay, so you can write that in your notes as well. So the readings that you are doing that I have assigned to you, they also kind of, you know, cover this period in a similar manner, right? So just for your own, uh, you know, uh, uh, record, you can just take a note that the Victorian period in England is, you know, continuation from the new classical period in England. So in the Victorian period, we have, uh, you know, Victorian poets, Albert Tennyson, Matthew Arnold, 
Robert Browning and Gabriel Rossetti. More than Victorian poetry, Victorian novel was famous. In fact, it is recognized as an outstanding genre. So the British Victorian novel probably is the best form of British literature ever produced. The writers include Charles Dickens, Charlotte Bronte, George Eliot, Thomas Hardy. So do you know any of the works by any of these novelists, students? Would you like to share a novel by at least two of these writers? Yes, a novel by at least two of these writers. Okay, so Great Expectations by Dickens, Usama has put in the chat and Minahal says uh, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Okay, other students, any novel by any of these writers? Okay, Bleak House by Charles Dickens. Uh, okay, any other? Or uh, okay, uh, Aisha Ratif, I don't know who is the no, who is the writer of this. So you can see the novelist on the left on your screen. So any novel by any of these writers? Billet. Who wrote this uh, uh, work, Muhammad Mohsin? Jalisa and the Return of the Native by Thomas Hardy. Jalisa didn't mark you present because I don't think you were uh, present when I took the attendance. I'll, I'll don't just remind me at the end. So Aisha Ratif says uh, by Charlotte. Okay, maybe, yeah. I, I think I have seen that once. Uh, no, Jalish, you are not a little late. You are a lot late. Okay. So I took the attendance. Then I went over the attendance of the people who were late and uh, who, who, who had a lot many absents. And then I gave some instructions. And then you joined. Okay. So Johnson Javed says, A Christmas Carol. Okay. By Charles Dickens. Talha says, Oliver Twist by Dickens and then Huram Abid, David Copperfield by Dickens. Okay, good. Remola by George Eliot. Maybe it's not a very... No, this... I don't think that is spelled like that. Adil Pervez, just check with that. It, it is a little known work by George Eliot. Uh, but I think it's spelled differently. Uh... Jalis, please remind me at the end now for the attendance. Uh, who else? Anybody else put any work? Halima uh, Tess by Thomas Hardy. Okay. Rija says the mayor of Castle Bridge by. Hardy and then Return of Native by Thomas Hardy. Yeah, that that is a work by him. Thomas Hardy, Three Strangers. Maybe I don't know about this work. Uh, Silas Marner, yes, by George Eliot. Again, I think this is spelled differently. Maru Junaid, you, you know, everybody should Look at the spelling carefully. The Mill on the Floss by Elliot. Yes, Arisha, that is right.
okay so, so uh, not everybody has to respond to this next question that i'm going to ask can you mention the work that you have read by any of these writers any student who has read a work by any of these writers uh, usama just mentioned the work if you have read it mohammed mohsin i don't know who wrote this tale shille do you have a writer to okay minaj says she has read jeda i good Uh, Sama so says the great expectations. Okay. Okay. This is a big achievement if you have read these novels already. Uh, Isa says under the greenwood tree by Thomas Hardy. Isa, did you read uh, the novel itself? Uh, Alina says Oliver Twist. Okay, good. And then Return of the Native as well. Sama, Alina says Christmas Carol. All right. Sama says, "Jane Eyre." All right, Isa. This is great. If you have read all these works, so uh, the rest of the students, even if uh, uh, you know, I mean, it's absolutely fine. You are just starting with uh, the uh, you know literature courses, okay? Uh, at 200 level uh, so it's not expected of you to have read okay so this is fine if you have not but i do suggest to you that uh, you start reading the shorter texts okay uh, most of the works by these writers are really big okay uh, but you can start with a with a with a smaller work if you can find at least you can start with the short stories you know these or other writers have written okay that is a good start but then there are shorter pieces of fiction as well uh, you can read that those those you know which, which you find shorter in the size so the best way is to uh, go to the library if that is possible for you and look up these writers over there and look at their texts which are available okay get hold of them and read them on your own that that will be really helpful at a later stage in your degree all right so now there is an important aspect of victorian novel you know this novel which is victorian novel is also called the realist novel it is called realist novel because uh, it represented uh, mostly well not not you know uh, not in all cases but in most of the cases uh the the novel written in victorian age was a kind of realistic or realist depiction of the society okay so there are too many ways to look at the society there are too many ways to look at life through a literary text so there could be for example uh a romantic view of life or there could be magical realist view of life or there could be a surrealist view of life there could be an abstract view of life as well right so some of you might have seen abstract paintings right they are very common so when you look at an abstract painting uh you do not usually get any meaning out of it why because the artist who made that painting had uh viewed at the life from the same perspective right and that art artist had realized that life was essentially meaningless therefore she or he painted uh, in abstract form right so i'm giving you those examples just to make you understand that another way of representation is realist way of representation and the victorian novel is one of the best examples of the realist depiction of life 
so these writers charles dickens bronte george eliot thomas hardy mostly you know mostly they represented the life from realist perspective in other words they described the life uh, as they saw it happening in front of them okay so their claim was that they was not that they were not uh, adding you know anything from their own side but they were only trying to give a photographic representation of the life as it as the sort of course there are there are some exceptions to right but mostly victorian novel is called the realist novel now this point is important because we also had along the same time the realist novel in the united states or the realistic period in the united states so the most important novelist the american novelist for the realistic period was mark twain whose real name was samuel l clemens and he wrote very well known the adventures of huckleberry finn many of you must have heard about it there was also a poet you know very famous poet american poet uh, you know a woman poet poetess emily dickinson right and she also wrote from the same perspective the realist perspective right so so this is what we discussed today we basically focused on the 19th century right the 19th century in american and british literature so in american literature in the 19th century we had the renaissance period american renaissance period and also we had the american transcendental movement at that time and american literature in 19th century was marked with gothic canon and african american canon so basically if you are interested in american literature as i said earlier uh you cannot study that without studying african american literature and then in in england along the same time in 19th century there was emerging what you call the victorian novel the victorian novel is also called the realist novel and at the same time in the united states parallel to the victorian novel we had the realist novel right uh, and to some extent the realist poetry as well right so this is all for today if you have any questions you can ask